business session of the February 15th, 2022 uh, meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. All council members are present. present. Welcome to our guests and visitors. We provide an opportunity for the public to address the city council on any agenda item or during the hearing and visitors portion of the agenda. On meetings other than public hearings, speakers will be allotted one three minute presentation, regardless of the number of items the speaker wishes to address. If you are here to speak and have not filled out a registration card, please see the city secretary staff at the registration table outside of the auditorium so that staff can contact you if necessary. If you have handouts, please let us know at the beginning of your presentation and staff will distribute those to council. If you're unable to approach the podium due to physical limitations, a microphone is available to be brought to you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item of business is to consider the minutes of the February 1st, 3 p.m. regular city council meeting. These minutes were provided in your agenda packet. Are there any corrections? If not, those minutes will stand approved and submitted. And the first item of uh, business is public hearing 2022-82. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution approving the following subdivision plats. Uh, final plat of the Lake Ridge edition, Estates Edition, lots 1 through 10, uh, block 1 in the ETJ. Uh, final plat and construction plans of the Liberty Oaks Edition. And final plat and construction plans of the Preserve at Bosque Bend Edition, Phase 3. Uh, by a vote of 11-0, Plan Commission recommended that the subdivision plats be approved. Are there any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing for comments. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? If not, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask for a motion. I'll move for approval. Second. Discussion. Please poll the council. Bearfield. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Waterroot. Yes. Palmer. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Meek. Yes. That motion carries. We'll move to public hearing 2022-83. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider a resolution granting a special permit to JRE golf, court, uh, golf carts. LLC for sale, rental, uh, parts, repair, and storage of recreational vehicles in M2 zoning district and property described as lot three, block one in the Yoder edition and known as 1900 West Loop 340. Uh, by a vote of 11-0, Plan Commission recommended approval of request based on the following findings. One, the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Two, the proposed use is compatible with appropriate or and orderly development of the area which is located. Three, the proposed use would not be more objectionable to neighboring properties because of traffic congestion noise, fumes, vibrations, or any other characteristics than the use permitted in the zoning district without the grant of the special exception. And four, that the available community <coughs> facilities and services, including the road system, providing access for the proposed use are adequate for the proposed use. Are there any questions for staff? We'll open a public hearing for comment. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? If not, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Borderoo. Yes. Palmer. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Meek. Yes. That motion carries. We'll move to public hearing 2022-84. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, writing that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco be amended by revising Section 28-247 of Chapter 28 Zoning of said Code, providing that the zoning map shall be changed as a certain property described as lots or lot three block one of the Wallet and Riley edition known as 1418 Spade Avenue shall be changed from R2 district classification and become to be designated an R3C district classification, providing for penalties, providing survey clause, and finally determining the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of uh, 10 to 0 with one abstention, the plan commission recommended approval of the request based on the following findings. One, proposed zoning is conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, the property meets all area and width requirements for R3C zoning. Three, the existing public infrastructure is adequate for for use is allowed in the zoning district. Four, there's other multifamily zoning in the vicinity of subject property. Five, the density allowed. The proposed zoning is compatible with the surrounding areas. Are there any questions for staff? I'll open up a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? I do have one card on this one. Mr. I'm going to say this wrong. Anchor. Am I saying that right? No. 
Um, if no one's here to speak, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Move for approval on first reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Barrafield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Baltarut? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Mate? Yes, that motion carries. We'll move to public hearing 2022-85. Honorable Mayor, members of the council, this is a public hearing to consider an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing that the Code of Ordinance of the City of Waco be amended by revising Section 28-247 and Chapter 28 Zoning as Ed Code, uh, providing that the zoning map shall be changed so that certain property described as Lot 8, Block 21 in Riverside Edition, uh, known as 804 Cherry Street, shall be changed from R1B District classification becoming to be designated in the R2 District classification, providing for penalties, providing severability clause, and finding and determining the meeting in which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. Uh, by a vote of seven to four, the plan commission recommended disapproval of the request based on the following findings. One, R1B zoning is a, do a dominant zoning in the area, and there's not other R2 zoning in this block of Cherry Street. And two, the existing R1B zoning is more compatible with the surrounding area than the proposed R2 zoning. Uh, if an application fails to receive a favorable report and recommendation by the plan commission, it shall be approved, it shall not be approved except by a three-fourths vote by all members of the council. The plan commission recommendation uh, was uh, for disapproval of this request. Uh, therefore, a three-fourths vote uh, is required to be approved. Are there any questions for staff? I'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? If not, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask for a motion. So for clarity, if the motion is that we would continue with the disapproval, we move to disapprove. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Move for disapproval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Barrafield? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Holmes? Aye. And me? Yes. That motion carries, and we will now move to the consent agenda, and I want Trish and Jennifer to make sure I have this right. The following items have been pulled from the consent agenda. <clears throat> 86, 109, 113. 97, 98, and 99 because of cards I've received. Is that right? Good job. It's <laughs> rare. All right. The first item we have on the um, consent agenda um, is resolution 2022-86. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Um, any discussion? Just to say that I think that, um, one, I really want to thank uh, Interim City Secretary uh, Patricia Irvin for coming back and standing in the gap for the City of Waco. Um, your leadership and legacy um, has been greatly appreciated. Um, it was a, a, a more challenging process than I thought, but um, how amazing is it that the person we were looking for lived right within these city limits and has full understanding of Waco and the advances of where the direction of where we're going. Um, I think this is going to be a tremendous opportunity um, for you to do what you love and, and in a city that you love and that you know. So I'm, I'm super excited about this and, and eager to work with you. And so for the public's benefit, we're um, uh, voting to um, approve our new city secretary um, who's with us today. Um, so that is, that is what this, this motion is about in case... I know it's, it's random, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> extend a hearty welcome uh, to Ms. Hicks and look forward to working with you uh, and also we'll echo the gratitude uh, for Trish Irvin, our, our living legend here who has stepped right. in in the gap uh, and who still has some work to do obviously through the election season so thank you for willing to continue but yeah so excited uh, for Ms. Hicks and can't wait to start working together. Welcome aboard Ms. Hicks. Yep, Ms. Hicks we're so glad to have you and thrilled that uh, you'll be on the team. Look forward to working with you. And to her family, thank you for being here tonight. We're so glad you're here. Thank Congratulations. Thank you for sharing her with us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, Bradley. Well, I, um, are we going to take a picture with with her uh, at the end of the meeting, or do you want to do that now? Why don't we? Um, since they've got we a young kiddo in the room, first. we need to vote first. We'll vote first. <laughs> <laughs> That's our city secretary, right? Right, and we, <laughs> we need to get it really, really official. <laughs> we'll, we'll vote first, and because they have a, a I say young kiddo in the, in the house tonight, and I'm thinking about what my wife would be saying with a young kid at uh, getting near bedtime. Uh, we'll, we'll take a picture right after this. So with that, um, please pull the council. With pleasure. 
<laughs> Barfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Borderu? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Meek? Yes. That motion carries. Congratulations, Michelle. Congratulations, Michelle. All right, Bradley, are we taking a picture? Is it, can you direct us on that? I would love to have uh, the council up with in front of the dais uh, with Michelle. And Michelle, if you'd like to bring family members, you can. Please do. Um, and I think, I think we'll do a quick picture. Thank you to our guests for allowing us to do that. We, um, it's a rare occasion that we hire um, people in this type of office at the city. Yeah. We have four direct appointments, our city manager, our city attorney, our city secretary, and our municipal judge. And so hiring um, someone in this office is a big deal. And so it's a big, big opportunity tonight to celebrate. And since there's family and young kiddos here, we appreciate the public uh, letting us uh, have a chance to celebrate this moment and take some pictures. So the next item we have is resolution 2022 dash um 86 mm -mm, that was a that was 86 mm -hmm. 109 sorry 109 is there a motion on that which one is hang on 
actually, actually, if we're going to go in order, it'll be uh, because of some cards, um, it'll be 97. So we'll do 2022-97. And I have several cards for this one. Um, and so before that, the motion, I will um, ask for, I have a card from Billy Richardson. Good evening, Mr. Richardson. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I uh, live at 4832 Scottwood Drive, which is next to the property that's uh, being proposed to have the affordable housing. And uh, the one thing I'd like to say is that, you know, everybody wants to have affordable housing. You know, we live in a time that the cost of living is real high and it's very difficult to afford living uh, facilities. but. The question I raise is why this location? And so I, I've looked at this location and, and this property has been on the market for many years and there's been uh, multiple times that we've said that we've needed property to build residences and multifamily uh, facilities and nothing has ever happened there. Now all of a sudden this has happened. And when I visited with the people from Tejas, the only reason they could give me is tax credits. And you know, I said, okay, it, would you do this if there were no tax credits? And there was no response. So it makes me understand that the whole reason behind this is that we're gonna provide affordable housing, but we wouldn't do it unless we had the tax credits. The other reason that I'm opposed to this is the tranquility of the neighborhood. There is no other property close to where we are that's similar to this. There are apartment complexes up Lakeshore Drive, uh, but there's nothing where we are. Every, there's a nursing home, there's a uh, credit union, and there's a, um, what do they call it, kidney dialysis uh, facility. So there's really no synergy to having this property next to the residential area, which has been there for many years. We've lived there since 1985. Uh, or the nursing home, the bank, or the uh, kidney dialysis place. And the reason I bring up tranquility is that whenever the nursing home went in, uh, we requested that you know there was a green zone put in, it was put in, but also that we'd have the ability to contact them if there was ever any issues. In discussing, and we've never had a problem with them except early on and they took care of it. Uh, but in discussing this with Tejas about their property, they said they would not have any management on site that could be contacted if there was issues that needed to be addressed like noise or anything like that. So I, it, it gives me concern that if we put it there and issues happen, who do we contact to resolve our issues as far as no, noise ordinance and other things like that. The other issue that's come to attention is uh, most of you have driven on Lakeshore Drive and it's a racetrack. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if it says it's 40 miles an hour, nobody drives 40 miles an hour on Lakeshore Drive. And coming down Lakeshore Drive towards North 19th is a big hill that people are going at ex excessive speeds. And where this property is located is right in the curve of Lake Shore where it straightens out to go to North 19th, which to me provides a big hazard for the potential of, that's my three minutes, isn't it? <laughs> a big hazard for people pulling out, especially the residents and also if there were school buses or stuff like that, that you know, people just, they don't pay attention. North 19th and Lake Shore is a very dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a concern. Uh, limited access to public transportation. You know, this, this is affordable housing, low income people. It, with the cost of fuel and so forth to be able to go to work and so forth, they need to be able to have the ability to get to their work without it, it, having a lot of expense. And if there's no public transportation, <coughs> how do they afford that? And Mr. Richardson, if you could wrap up your comments, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, it's, if you could just kind of wind down your okay. comments, please, since you've hit your three minutes. Uh, I say I'm an opponent, uh, I want the right thing. And I feel like there is plenty of other properties in, in Waco that's closer to employers that would help uh, people minimize their expenses and so forth. And I just don't think this is the right property at this time. Thank, Thank you, sir. For your Appreciate consideration. You. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, the next uh, card we have is uh, Mr. Steve Beard.
Good evening, Mr. Beard. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you all. My name is Steve Beard. I live at 5408 Point Wood Circle, Waco, Texas. Uh, I come here tonight as an owner of Greenway Number no. 4 LLC, which is the landlord for the dialysis facility that has been leased to Fresenius Medical Care. We entered into a 15-year lease in 2014, three five-year options thereafter, a great national, international tenant. That facility is a 24-unit facility that allows for the dialysis of patients twice a day, two shifts, roughly four to five hours apiece. However, staff of about 10 arrives at 4.30 in the morning. Patients begin arriving around 5.30. The last patients, the last staff, leave about 6 o'clock in the evening. This is for a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, four-hour, five-hour dialysis treatment. The same goes again Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday with another uh, 40 to 45 patients. So you've got roughly 90 patients, uh, 10 to 15 staff members uh, handling this. 365 days a year, it is dark when staff and patients arrive. At least half of that period of time, patients and staff go home in the dark. These patients, if you know people that are on dialysis, are very, very ill. Uh, it's been said that those patients in the hospital are the sickest in the hospital at any given time. Generally, once you go on a dialysis machine, you've got a life expectancy of five to seven years. You're very, very frail. You are very ill. They are most vulnerable as a result to their surrounding elements. The last thing that these people need to be worried about is coming to their facility for treatment in the dark and worry about what's around me. Right now, as we say, we've got some single uh, uh, use businesses we be in the last one before the curve at this point, and we do not have these issues. Paragraph 29 of my lease agreement, roughly a half an inch thick, provides that I as landlord will provide the tenant with peaceful enjoyment of the facility. And if we provide that, then of course the tenant pays the rent. I am concerned as a landlord, will I be able to continue to provide for my tenant this peaceful enjoyment and use of the property if I have this development next door to me? I don't need it. These people have enough on their minds, i.e. survival, not to have this pressure point. I likewise do not wish to have this pressure point. I urge you to disapprove this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beard. Um, the next card we have is Alice Ogden. Ms. Ogden. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Ogden. Um, and then we also have Mr. Sly. Same. Very good. Um, Ms. Pate, or Mr. Pate, rather. David Dixon. And then I think we got a couple others, but they are already hitched their wagons to Mr. Dixon. So with that... <laughs> Mr. Dixon, take the stage. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mayor, members of the council. My name is David Dixon. I live at 5400 Point Wood Circle here in Waco. And uh, I am here tonight representing several property owners in the area. They are Westdale Capital Investors II, represented tonight by Andrew Smeltikoff, who's here for himself and his partner, Joe Beard. Triad Development, which is Kenneth and Gary Young, they're both here. <clears throat> Alice Ogden, Greg Ogden, and Charlie Sly. Uh, are, uh, Alice and Charlie are here. And Northgate Waco LLC, the developer of the RV park along the river. Now, Mr. Sly and Ms. Ogden and Triad Development all own property across Lake Shore that fronts on Lake Shore across from the dialysis center. Further down the road, of course, are Westdale and Northgate Waco. I want to be very brief, but I can give you five reasons why 
uh, this resolution should be turned down. One, as indicated, you have a substantial number of your landowners in the area uh, opposed to the motion. Number two, it's a nice commercial area and multi it's not zoned for multifamily. And I led, uh, I believe, after talking to the planning department, a zoning change will be necessary to affect multifamily use on this property. It really doesn't fit with the neighborhood which is developed to be a commercial neighborhood. As Mr. Beard pointed out, there's no public transportation in the immediate area. Uh, I don't believe we have a bus stop there. And I agree, Lakeshore 19th is a pretty dangerous intersection. People go through there at high rates of speed. The property is in a food desert, is another point I wanted to make. Now, one of the developers, it was reported to me by one of my clients at one of the meetings, the developer said, well, HEB will be there on the corner. You can walk to that. Well, we've been waiting on HEB on that corner for about 20 years. And if anybody can figure out what HEB is <laughs> going to do, I wish they would tell me uh, because uh, I'd like to know. But uh, there has been no grocery store built there, and they may, there may never be a grocery store built there. So what are your options? You got two convenience stores, Shipley's Donuts, and John Lilly Steakhouse. Not, you know, uh, not encouraging a, a healthy, family-friendly diet. Also, putting multifamily in puts more people in. I was at a uh, meeting several years ago, the Waco police, uh, said Richland Mall had the highest crime rate in town, and somebody said, why? Well, that's where the people are. Criminals go where the people are. So, uh, you know, injecting more people into the area would not be good. We ask that you vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? That's all the cards I have. Uh, yes, sir. Please say your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members evening. of the council. My name is Tim Lang. I am with Tejas Housing Group. We are the developers for the proposed uh, Hueco Residences property. And I wanted to come up and uh, clarify a few points that I think have been misconstrued. Um, uh, I'd like to start with some of Mr. Richardson's comments regarding uh, on-site property um, and just be totally transparent there. We would, do have a a professional on-site management company, they are as reachable as any business um, uh, that you could find. Um, regular business hours, available by phone. Um, we're also completely available um, and very responsive to any kind of needs that will come up. Um, we are, we take pride in being very responsible developers. Um, I know that a lot of, uh, has been said about the tranquility of the neighborhood. Um, and we, we take this very seriously. And what we've done was, um, initially we had a 200 foot buffer, wooded buffer between uh, our property line and the neighboring homes to the rear. Uh, we've since increased that to 300 feet. Um, we wanna be good neighbors. We don't wanna intrude uh, on anyone's privacy or solitude. Uh, we wanna be uh, we don't want anyone to know we're there. Um, we have no ingress or egress into the, into the neighborhood to the rear. Um, all entry and exits will be onto Lakeshore Drive. Um, another point that I wanted to clarify was um, that, you know, our, our residents are just people. Um, yes, they're low income. Yes, they need a break with their rents. Uh, you know, anyone who spends more than 50% of their income on rent uh, is not living a very good life. Um, you have a lot of wants and needs. Um, this program, as, as you well know, um, offers a break to those people. Um, uh, it doesn't mean that they are reliant on public transportation. Um, this proposed property is gonna have over, uh, right around 200 parking spaces. Um, you know, they own cars, they have jobs, uh, they function just like you and I. They just don't make the same amount of money. 
Um, so to characterize him any other way is unfair, um, and it's just not right. Um, we had two meetings uh, late last year. Um, we had about seven or eight people. Uh, at each of the meetings, you should have some of the questions that were asked um, of me at that time. Uh, each meeting lasted about an hour. We, we answered every question that, that everyone had. Um, and I just, uh, just want to make sure that council understands that we answered all of the questions in good faith. Um, we don't have control over the traffic on, on Lakeshore Drive. Um, there's, there's just simply nothing we can do about that. Um, however, we did address uh, as, as many concerns as we could uh, with the neighborhood to make sure that uh, their lives would be uninterrupted by, by our development, uh, that we would be good neighbors, and that we would build a quality property and be responsive and responsible owners. That's all I have. I have, a, I have a, a couple questions. So um, one is, what is the design of this development? Do we have renderings that we can put up on the PowerPoint? There, yeah, there should be one in the, uh, I don't know if you have a copy of the application package that was submitted to the city. Did a PowerPoint, I think that'd be good. I'd like to see that. And then while that's getting geared up, you said there will be on-site management. What will that look like? Absolutely, on-site management and maintenance. Uh, they'll work a full 40 hour week, just like any other market rate apartment property. Um, we're very responsive in that regard. Have y'all developed properties before? We have uh, over 18 properties in Texas, yes. And what is the, uh, how, um, do you have full side time management on those, at those Absolutely. locations? Absolutely. We have full time management, full time maintenance. Uh, and we are also the only tax credit developer in the state that I'm aware of that also has a full-time social services coordinator. Um, it's, it's a requirement of the tax credit program. Um, and uh, I think we're the only, the only developers in the state that actually employ a full-time person on site for after-school programs, summer camps. Uh, we do a pays for A's program where the kids will get a $5 for an A and $3 for a B on their report cards. Um, so um, one, one other question that I, kind of just jogged my memory was um, that we wouldn't build this property if it wasn't for the tax credits. We couldn't afford to build affordable house housing without the tax credits. It's a, it's a vital part of the financing for a tax credit property. It's what enables us to keep the rents low. So, And when you, that, that leads to another question I have is what's the breakdown of market versus affordability on your units? And when you say affordable, what is, how, what's the application process like and what is, what is that? Uh, well, the city of Waco has a requirement that uh, to be eligible for resolution support, you need to have 15% of your units at market rate and the remainder affordable. Uh, we have that breakdown, 85% of the units will be affordable, meaning they will be at or below 60% of the area median income. Uh, the other 14 units, 74 units, 14 will be market rate that will have no income or rent restrictions on them. Okay. Okay. So this, this rendering that you see now is, is actually a three-story property. Uh, it'll be the same design, but it will be in a two-story, um, which was one of the, I don't want to say concessions, but that was one of the... Uh, one of the points that we made to be uh, as cognizant as we can about the privacy of the neighborhood. I think the trees around there are, are plenty high enough if we did build a three-story that the neighboring neighborhood would not see our property, but with a two-story, I can guarantee that there will be no, no intrusions as far as visual. Okay. Um, and then um, where is this on the... Is there a map of where this goes, where are you plan to place this on the plot, or is that? Okay, there should also be a location map uh, in that same application package. Here, we'll get, we'll get that pulled up here in a moment. Okay. Uh, any other questions for, I guess, like, where do you plan to put it on the site while they're pulling that up? I'm sorry? Where are you planning to put that on the site? Will it be screened on all sides? You said you don't want to even be seen at all. Will it be? 
It will be by. directly behind the dialysis center. Um, the entry will be just to the west of the di dialysis center. Great. Okay. So, um, one other one other point to make uh, as far as the zoning goes um, is that it does conform with the 2016 land use plan. Uh, it's it's actually zoned under it's currently zoned under three different zoning uh, designations. The 2016 land use plan uh, designates it as a um, flex uh, commercial flex something to that effect, uh, which which does uh, enable multifamily as a permitted use. Thank you, sir. Any other questions from council? I have a question of staff. Right. All right, so we will, thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone here to speak on this item? Anyone else here to speak on this item? What? All right, we will close the public hearing. It's, it's not and, a public hearing. Oh, sorry, sorry, we will, thank you. Sorry about that. All right, um, and Jim had a question for staff. Yeah, uh, Clint, um, and I kind of touched on it this afternoon. But is th this is one of them that currently doesn't have the zoning or the land use that fits the project. Is that is that correct? For for this thing to, to actually, I know we're not talking about that in this meeting. Granted, I'm not going to broach that subject, Jennifer. But uh, the and this is only for a, a uh, resolution of support or whatever it's called, resolution of support. But I just want to know are there going to be these same hurdles coming up? It, it, and I, I hope that's a legitimate question. Are there? What, is this fitting the current zoning and land use designation? So the existing zoning on the property is a combination of zonings, the majority of it. It's a, it's a larger property. I believe they're going to subdivide off, but the majority of it is currently zoned 03, which is a, a mixed-use office, low-density residential zoning district, so they would need to rezone it to a multifamily district. Our land use plan and our comprehensive plan does call for mixed use multifamily residential but the zoning would have to be changed it would have out. to come you'd have to go through the whole staff cycle plan commission cycle correct. council yeah. cycle for that's it to correct. be approved the other one that's on the in the resolutions tonight fits the the uh the current land use and current uh zoning correct correct, correct. the one on new road is zoned r3b which allows multifamily as a use by right yeah okay thanks All right, are there any other questions of staff? Are y'all working to get the map up or? Okay. Almost there. Yes, sir. Right. Or you can look at this. Can you pass that to Dylan? Dylan? What's that? Or Mayor on page 201 of our agenda packet. Okay. Like you can see that as well. I don't want to describe it. There's not nothing here. Sure. I don't want to go. Oh. I think um, actually if you can pull it up on the big screen uh, there is a mayor this might be helpful to you this drawing that's on your screen now we're about to pull up on the big screen there's also a architectural drawing that we have in the application if you'd like to see it where the actual buildings are going to be placed yeah that's so what that's I'm, what you're looking for that's what I'm looking for give us a moment we'll have that up in a moment yeah that's what I need Um, I have a, Renisha, I have a question too for staff. Right she back in the back.
<clears throat> Can you remind me of the breakdown? So on this development, there'll be, um, my question is, like in the in the rent structure, like how does that how will that work? Is it like a percentage of someone's income, or like what would the rent the 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 rents charged be on the affordability side of this? Yes. So the rent will be based on the income limit, which so if at thirty percent of the area medium income, the income would be thirteen thousand one fifty, and so the rent would be approximately three hundred and twenty eight dollars. So it's according to the uh, AMI. Right, great. So people will have to pay rent out of their own pocket to live here. Correct. They will be, um, um, I have a question for, another question for you real quick, sir. Sorry. Sure. Is the, um, there has to be, I would assume, as is the case for most real estate investors, you have income, it's some, they have to have an income um, in order to apply and have access to your apartment, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Everyone has to be income verified before they could move on to the property. Yes. Rent and the it would be the affordable would be three twenty five. Is that approximate? What that is? Yeah. There's there's three levels of rent being charged. Thirty percent. Uh, there will be ten percent of the units. Approximately eight units will be at the thirty percent level. Which would uh, be the three twenty five. So eight units at three twenty five. That if they're yeah one they could be one or two bedroom sure. two bedrooms would be a little bit more. Uh, there's also 20% of the units would be at the 50% level, and then the remaining 70% of the units will be at the 60% level, which is basically your you know it's the majority of the property, uh, workforce housing. You're talking about retail teachers, uh, you know entry level employees. What is what is 60% of our median income, Renisha? Do you have that by chance? And each of the each of the tax credit properties that you're going to be uh, hearing today will all be working off of the same uh, income and rent levels. Okay. So sixty percent at a family size of one is twenty six thousand two eighty. For a family size of two is thirty thousand. For a family size of three is thirty three thousand seven eighty. And for a family size of four, it's thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Do we have those rent rate? What those rent rates would be then, too? Yes. And so for a one bed, one person, it's uh, six fifty-seven, um, two seven fifty, and then um, eight forty-four fifty, and then for four, it's nine thirty-seven fifty. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um. Before, are you? Did you have more questions? I, I'm just waiting to see the layout. Renisha, before you slip off, um, I know in the work session you were able to give us a, a better breakdown of definitions because sometimes words have uh, heavy weighted meanings and their biases attached to them. So I'd like to go into some conversation about what the difference between affordable is in, in how it is uh, construed and then low income. Because I know that a lot of times there's just problem with the naming of things. Um, if we know and we go on look at, at how our districts are broken down, there are a great number of people who live, um, I know in District 1, that live, that work um, and only make around $24,000 a year. And so to, <laughs> um, to find uh, adequate housing, you know, because we all want to live in safe places, nice places, um, because we're working. Uh, we have a, a hard time, especially now, as we've clearly identified in the housing crisis that we're a bit short on housing period, let alone at various incomes. So I want to talk about what those different things mean so we can maybe bring some context and wrap, wrap ourselves around what we're talking about. Because I think we're all talking about the same thing, but we just view them in different ways. Correct. So um, affordable housing is 30% of your income. Mm -hmm. And so that can be within any income range. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh, but according to HUD, when working with federal uh, funded programs, it's according to HUD's allocation. So they take the area medium income and for the city of Waco, it's 61,900. And they take a percentage, which would be 30, 50, and then 60, and then 80. And so that's where it comes into play when we talk about affordable housing as it relates to tax income credit properties. 
um, as it relates to market rate unit, it's, there's no rental restriction or income sure. associated with a, a market rate unit. Sure. And um, in this particular property, there are both market rate and affordable units. There, 15% you said was market rate? Correct. Is that right? So um, just because it's a, a, a place to live, a space that's available and necessary and needed here, you know, whether you're making, you know, a professor at MCC, which is proximal, and want to live and work in that, or you're a student at MCC, which is proximal, you could live in those apartment complexes. Correct. Thank you. I want to follow uh, Councilman Barefield's train of thought. Um, for the benefit of all of us in this room, Renisha, can you speak to the number of affordable housing units that were short in our community for mm -hmm. Uh, folks or for households that fall between that zero to 60 percent of area median income? So I think we're short a shortage of about 5,000 units. Okay. Mm. Great. Any other questions for staff? Um, all right, I will call for a motion. Mayor, uh, Mayor, before we do that, here's the sketch you wanted to see. Thanks. With the image on kind of oriented Lake Shores on your top left, um, and you see how the buildings lay in behind the two, two buildings that are up on Lake Shore. Very good. Any other questions for staff? Call for a motion. I'll move for disapproval of this uh, resolution of support. Is there a second? There's not a second. I'll take another motion. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, and I'll just. Uh, Go back to. I'm totally supportive of the, this whole tax program, and, and, and I, I appreciate the folks who are trying to take advantage of it and move to places in the community. This one's not zoned for this kind of project. It doesn't have the land use for this kind of project. We're going to be talking about it again if it does get approved, and I, I just don't think it's uh, the right place. And there's other places in the same general neighborhood that would work, just not this place. So I'm going to be voting uh, against that. Uh, um, resolution I kind of feel like I'll, I'll reserve my judgment to, to Councilmember Holmes point on the zoning which I you know if it is approved then we've got to take this up but in a slightly different lens I, I feel like I'll we've got such a housing shortage I'll you know put the my vote towards a resolution of support if it gets approved then we'll take up the zoning uh, when it comes back that's kind of my perspective on it Clint, this does have zone. It, the, I understand about the zoning, but you said it was consistent with land use, right? Sorry. So, yes, there are multifamily zoning districts that are in conformance with our comprehensive plan, land, future land use plan, but it will have to go through the public hearing process. Through plan commission, city council. I just, the uh, just council member Holmes said, you know, it's not consistent with land use. It's not consistent with zoning. But point of clarification, it's just not consistent with zoning. It is consistent with our land use plan, correct? Correct. Okay. Point of clarification. Point taken. Uh, did uh, mayor did the developer know that it was not zoned for this, uh, and that he would have to come back? He did. <laughs> he's not. He did? He's oh, not okay. Yes. I guess so. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I really appreciate each of the neighbors that came out um, to speak on this and to speak as a collective voice. Know that we, even when we vote in disagreement, we deeply value citizen input. Uh, I think one of the challenges of the six of us sitting up here is we're trying to hold all of these different tension, all these different values in tension with one another. And right now we have an incredible housing crisis on our hand and that doesn't minimize the need for public transportation and the need to address food desert. Each of those things are critical. Um, but right now we are thousands of units short. And so every day Wacoans are living in substandard housing, whether that's a motel or um, a house with lead-based paint or they're living on the street. And so we have to take aggressive measures in order to 
can meet this gargantuan need. And so that is why I'm voting in approval for this. Any other discussion? Um, I, I also um, really, um, I, I agree with Councilmember Borderud that we'll have another vote on a zoning change and can really uh, weigh that tension. But tonight, tonight we're just looking at um, whether or not we support one of the many tax credit, many tax credit, um, federal tax credit, not local, federal tax credit developments. And when I look at this and, and its placement and, and its obscurity from Lakeshore Drive and its screening um, from the neighborhood, both in elevation and in um, tree line, um, and, and, and having had seen both this developer and others um, um, uh, find success in having really good mixed income developments um, that are both new and safe and clean um, and positive, um, and, uh, but also uh, affordable, um, I think that um, while it's a hard tension, um, knowing that you know these will be we need workforce housing we need people that are having those entry-level jobs or in college um, that that have access to this and um, I don't want to see um, our community lose out on the opportunity to have access to affordable units in our community given the shortage for people in those entry-level jobs or, or in college um, who are trying to find a way to um, uh, become financially secure with the rising cost in this community and um, seeing, seeing how it's screened and where it's fitting and, and seeing the great need for housing in, the, in, in our community, I think that um, it, it's okay to cast a, a motion of support for this development, but again, we'll continue to evaluate the zoning needs um, for this uh, on another day, as Council Member Borderud said. Um, so with that, I will ask for a motion, or sorry, a call for a vote. Pull the council, please, sorry. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Borderud? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? No. Me? Yes, that motion carries and we'll move to resolution 2022-98. And I have two cards for this. And the first one is um, Avis Chasem. Did I say your last name right? It's okay. I <laughs> could chase and chase and Shashan is the correct Oh gosh, way wrong. No, Shashan. no worries. I'm Ava Shashan. I'm the director of real estate De development with Clayton USA. So I represent uh, the developer Waco South New Road. Uh, apropos to have a discussion about workforce housing. Uh, we are excited to be, uh, have a site in Waco for consideration. As it was mentioned, our site is zoned. We are bringing a mixed income component. Actually, we're proposing approximately 65% of our units would be affordable, and the remaining balance, 35%, will be market rate. We feel like this is a great location. I would uh, like to tell you, as you have identified a housing shortage, one of the difficulties with uh, getting housing on the ground and one of the greater barriers has been uh, getting public hearings and going through zoning because there's not a lot of sites that are appropriately zoned. We were lucky to find a great site in the city of Waco that's zoned, that's close to jobs, that's close to retail and provide services for our residents. And uh, here at Palladium, we do uh, provide quality class A construction housing. So it is market rate housing that's for the workforce. And just as you passed earlier, the TSTC uh, item, you'll have those entry level uh, welders who will be able to live in a place and call it, call it home. Uh, we do in-house property management. We do not do third party. So we will have a property manager on site. We'll have a maintenance person on site. So we really do ask for your support tonight so we can get quality housing on the ground for those who need it most in Waco. Amen. Uh, I have another card, and that is from uh, Mr. Johnny Johnson. Mayor, council members, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Johnny Johnson. I am the, currently the first vice president of the Alta Vista Neighborhood Association and uh, past president. I, have, I reside at 3413 Medallion Circle in Waco, Texas. And uh, <clears throat> I'm in here to inform you that uh, Alta Vista Neighborhood Association, as opposed to the proposed low income housing tax credit project at 3200 
South New Road, which you're considering tonight under resolution 2022-0098. Several of our members have uh, met with the developer on this project in three different occasions. We oppose this <coughs> development based on these uh, observations we came up with and decisions that uh, the intersection of New Road and Old Robinson Road is currently a hazard. This would only be a further hazard as far as you, uh, if you uh, <clears throat> know of the area, it is right almost across from University High School. We have two apartment complexes that are further up the road on, on the other side of uh, New Road Church of Christ, which is the uh, roots, and the other one is the bend. And uh, <clears throat> that would, uh, we think, would uh, further congest the area in this way because not only do they come from different areas across Interstate, under across from Interstate 35, but they also come from down uh, Old Road, coming from uh, Alta Vista <coughs> Elementary School, and they also come from Highway 77 back up Garden Drive before it hits New Road. So we have a congestion there that we've been battling for a while, and uh, we're under the assumption that uh, hopefully we will get a traffic light there to alleviate some of this problem. Another <clears throat> factor is we understand that the Alta Vista Elementary School is going to be closed by uh, the Waco Independent School District. This means that the children that live there have to be either bused to either Kendrick Elementary, which is being torn down on the new proposed bond and rebuilt. And also they'll be going to South Waco, which is also going to be under renovation. The proximity of the single family residential would not, would allow upper story units also to see into the yards and possible windows of a residential area that it is backing up to. Chesser and also Denise are in that area. And if this is a uh, projected three story project, which uh, you know is a lot higher than a single family housing. So we object to that. Other locations such as the... Mr. Johnson, I don't know if you heard uh, the time, the buzzer went off, so your time is up. If you could just wrap up, please. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the City of Waco says the Neighborhood Association to our report, and we, we hope that you will consider this on our part, that uh, we are opposed to it, and I thank you for your time and consideration and your vote on this project. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else here to speak on this item? Um, I'll ask for a motion. Any motions? I'll move for approval. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? No. Voderup? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Meek? Yes. So that motion carries. And the next um, item we have is resolution 2022-99. Oh, sorry. That's been pulled from the consent agenda. So that is yes. not. That's pulled yes. from the consent agenda. We're not doing that. The next one we have is 109. Excuse me. Um, and um, I'll ask for a motion. Is there, well, first, is there anyone here to speak on this item? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Mayor Phil? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Make? Yes, that motion carries, and we'll move to resolution 2022-113. Um, is there, I'll ask for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. 
Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Meek? Yes, that motion carries. And uh, the consent agenda consists of resolutions 2022 86 through 115, with the exceptions of 86, um, 85, 97, 98, 99, 109, and 113. Is that correct? That's right. Very good. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? I'll move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Borderuk? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Me? Yes, that motion carries. And the next item is the ordinances. Uh, 2022-116, an ordinance terminating reinvestment zone number two for tax increment financing, City of Waco, Texas, effective February 28, 2022, and authorizing the city manager to execute any documents in connection therewith. This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on January 18, 2022. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Bordereau? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Me? Yes, that motion carries, and the next ordinance is 2022-117. Ordinance amending ordinance number 2020-456 to authorize the use of the facsimile signature of Nicholas B. Sarpy as Director of Finance on all checks, vouchers, and warrants in accordance with Article 7, Section 9 of the Charter of the City of Waco, Texas, effective February 16, 2022. This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on February 1st, 2022. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval on second reading. Second. Discussion? Please pull the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Bordereau? Yes. Palmer? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Me? Yes, that motion carries in the next ordinance is 2022-118. An ordinance authorizing a developer participation and infrastructure cost sharing agreement with Cooper's Real Estate Investment Corp which will, number one, provide for the design and construction of water system improvements in order to extend the city's water system to the Highway 84 at Valerie Road area and allow for reimbursement to the city of Waco for said extension in the amount of $667.83 per platted lot of the West End at Valverde Edition. And number two, allow the city of Waco to participate in the total cost for oversizing of improvements required by the city for the West End at Valverde Edition in an amount not to exceed the total amount at four hundred and sixty-seven thousand forty-seven dollars, and authorizing the city manager to execute any uh, any documents in connection therewith. This ordinance was approved by a six-zero council vote on first reading on February first, twenty twenty-two. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please vote. Council. Bearfield. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Bordereau. Yes. Palmer. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Me. Yes. That motion carries. Um, next, we have the hearing of visitors. During the hearing and visitor section of the agenda, we provide an opportunity for the public to present concerns or address issues that are not matters for consideration listed on the agenda. Council is unable to conduct discussion, but will listen, ask staff to let, look into concerns, and provide follow-up. Please provide registration information so that staff can contact you if necessary. If you have handouts, please let us know at the beginning of your presentation, and staff will distribute those to council. If you're unable to approach the podium due to physical limitations, a microphone is available to be brought to you. Is there anyone present who would like to speak during the hearing of visitors? If not, we will close the hearing of visitors. Are there any council member reports, committees, boards, commission liaison visits? I do want to say that it is the um, one year anniversary-ish of the winter storm. And I just want to acknowledge um, that uh, um, as we as that gets further in the distance, it still is with much um, warmth on those cold days that um, I think about our staff and how hard our staff worked and our community really came together um, and know that this community and this city is one that is, remains committed to continuing to ensure that we um, are safe in the event of events like this. Is there anything else? Are there any future agenda items, everybody? Anybody? All right, there being no further business, we will adjourn at 7.07 p.m.